Hey guys, welcome back to the Songwriting Studio, and in today's video, we're going on a hunt for the cheesiest, most awesome 80s sounds that you can find in GarageBand. In the last several years, it's become really, really popular to bring 80s or retro elements into modern pop songs. And I have to say that I've been bringing some of those elements into the songs I'm writing as well, and so I thought it'd be fun to show you guys some of the best 80s sounds and patches and presets here in GarageBand. So let's jump in. All right, everyone, so we're inside of a project that I made just for this video. You're welcome. And we're gonna go through different sounds and presets and processing that I think fit really well in the context of an 80s song. So here we go. All right, so number one, I'm gonna show you droplets. So one of the things that was popular in the 80s was like this arpeggiated synth. And so if you go under arpeggiator, synth layers, droplets, and you hit a note, like, I just feel like the Chariots of Fire theme song is about to break out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? So there you have the droplets. I think that's a really awesome sound. And let's keep moving on down. So I'm gonna get into pads. So pads to me are one of the hallmarks of an 80s or retro style song. And I found a few that I feel like really hit the mark with that 80s vibe. And so I'm gonna start off with my favorite. It's called Dynamic Swell. So the dynamic, sm the dynamic Smell can be found under Synthesizer, Pad, and you go down to Dynamic Smell. <laughs> dynamic Swell. And these, by the way, always in GarageBand, they're in alphabetical order, just in case you didn't know that. And so let me just play a little something for you here just to kind of get, kind of wet the willy, okay? Are, are, are you ready for this? I mean, if that is an 80s, I don't know what is. I mean, come on, man. So another uh, pad that you could look at is called the Analog Stack Synth. I use them together uh, in layers. And this one is actually a lead synthesizer, but it plays like a pad. Normally leads, you can only hit one note at a time, but this one plays like a pad. You can hit multiple notes. And so I'll play a little bit of that. So good, right? So let's keep moving on down. I'm gonna get into more leads here. I have the chip tune lead, and I've always liked this patch that GarageBand offers. I've used it in some 80s type songs that I've done. Jesus Christ, the King of Heaven. Yeah. And I really like the sound of this. It's like a blend between a synth and an electric guitar, and I think it has a really cool sound. So let me, let me, uh, let me, let me, let me play a little something. And what's cool about this is you can almost use it like an electric guitar and I actually uh, produced a song for a student one time when I used this preset to do a lead electric guitar line, this huge solo that was totally cool, totally sick, but it was actually using that right there. So definitely a cool one to look at. And then let's move on down into the bebop organ. So if you go into vintage B3 organ, at the very top, the bebop, be bebop is a really cool sound if you're going for that retro vibe. I think it just, it becomes a nice layer to things. So it may not be the most prominent instrument, but it can definitely kind of sit in the background and warm up your 80s vibed track. All right, so let's move down. We're getting into some of the lower end sounds, uh, some of the lower end of the spectrum, the frequency spectrum. And we're looking at basses. And to me, hands down, the one that sounds the most 80s is the picked bass because it just has like that 80s pluck to it and that kind of cheesy uh, vibe to it. All right, so moving on down into drums. And again, drums are like a huge hallmark of 80s retro songs. If you don't have that cheesy tom or, or snare, like it's not gonna sound 80s. And so check this out. So, this kit rocks it to me. So if you go under electronic drum kit, you'll find the neon drum kit. It has a great kick and snare. And then also, like it has really great toms. And I just feel like, man, this just hits the nail on the head. If you're going for 80s, this is a great kit 
to look at, the neon kit. All right, so now let's get down into real instrument tracks, meaning guitars, vocals, things that you're actually playing and seeing out here. All right, so we're gonna start with the big hair harmonics. And to me, there's a lot of presets, guitar presets, electric guitar presets that could sound 80s. If you're going for acoustic guitar, then you're probably gonna be looking at the chorus uh, preset. But if you're looking at electric guitars, there's several that could do the job as long as you put enough like reverb and chorus and stuff like that on them. I think it can sound 80s, but one just straight up preset that I think sound, sounds great is the Big Hair Harmonics. <laughs> And so obviously they're getting that name from the era of hair metal rock in the 80s. And so, yeah, it's gonna have an 80s sound. So let me solo this and let you hear just a little piece of what I was playing here earlier. <laughs> So if you're going for 80s, really distorted metal guitar, this is it. And I'll just let you know that when you have the uh, monitor on for this, there's a whole lot of fuzz and <sighs> But it's okay, once you record, that's not in there. It's just kind of the static noise because there's so much distortion on this particular preset. All right, so now let's move down into the last thing and that is vocals. So if you wanna create if you want to create an 80s vocal, first of all, don't have the monitor on while you're filming your YouTube video. But I would say as far as presets go, the one that I could find that sounded the most 80s just right off the bat would, of course, be the classic vocal. So if you've got just an empty track, you go to voice, hit classic, and it gives a pretty good classic sound. I'll play just the classic vocal. This is strictly the preset. I haven't changed anything, and it sounds like this. I'm making a song. And it sounds really 80s. So that's not bad. But what I wanted to do was build on that a little bit. I thought it could sound more 80s. And part of what I did was I took that same vocal track and here's what I did. I mean, it's really easy. Three things you can do to make every track more 80s, whether you use the classic preset or not. Number one, come down to the master reverb and add some of that nice, luscious, long, master reverb for ambience. Then number two, this is big, you're gonna add some master echo and it just gonna give it this kind of echoey feel that was very common in the 80s. And then lastly, I have added the chorus plugin. So I found an empty slot, went into modulation and then added chorus. And so now you can hear the difference between the two. I'll play one and then the other. I'm making a song. And here's my cooler version. I'm making a song. Yeah. And it sounds really 80s. All right, so when you start to put all of those things together, you can get yourself a real 80s retro sound and song. So I wanted to put all those elements together, make a special 80s tune just for you here in this video. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the 80s garage band song. Lost my hat way back there. All right guys, so that is the best 80s patches and presets here in GarageBand. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I wanted to mention again that I actually have a five part free mini course 
called my Quick Start Guide to GarageBand. So if you're just getting started in GarageBand, if you want to learn about recording and editing and really starting to write and produce your own music from GarageBand, then check out the link in the description below. And I always like to be up front and say if you do that, you're becoming an email subscriber, but it's not a big deal because I don't have any junk mail to send you. I just send you new training, new courses, new music, things like that. And then number two, when you get into that mini course, you'll also get the chance to step into the full 25 part course on GarageBand that has over 3,000 students around the world in it. So if you're interested in that, I'll put the link in the description below. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.